Well, first of all, Charles, nice to, to catch up with you. Not the best of weeks in football for Crow Alexander, of course, no doubt about that. What happened at the weekend and that big R came next to your name in, in, in League One. And then a few days later, you said farewell and parting company with previous manager David Artel. Just before we go into how you're moving forward and what you're trying to do, just your words on the job and the work that David Artel did for Crow Alexandra. I've got nothing but uh, uh, good things to say about Dave. Um, we persuaded David to take the job in the first place. Um, and having worked with him for, you know, close to 10 years, um, we had a, a, an excellent relationship. And um, he's been a great, uh, a great servant to the club. I and mean, he was a captain, of course, and, and he got us promoted. So uh, it is a sad week. Um, relegation is, is, is not a huge surprise, but it's always terribly disappointing when it happens. And everybody is extremely disappointed around the club. And the air around the club is, you know, was, was quite down. Um, the, the decision, um, we're in the process of parting company with, with David, but the, the decision um, to do that it wasn't based out of the weekend or the, the relegation. It was it was based on where we're at, how we've done this season, all through the season, um, how we thought we could recover and how thought we thought we could go forward. So um, having to sit down with David after the under-23s game um, uh, and express our thanks, but also say you know we we would have to make changes it was extremely difficult. I always thought that the conversation with uh, David Artel would be difficult the other way around. And we spoke about it a lot, I think I've said to you before. Uh, David's career uh, in the club and his progression has always been a, a source of open conversation. Um, because particularly after the promotion, I thought people might come in for David Artel. And as you know, and I can say it quite openly, if uh, a bigger club had come from David, we might have had some discussions about the financial implications of that. But David would have, been, would have been allowed to go and go on and pursue his career. So I always, and I said this to Dave on Monday, I always assumed that he would come into my office, if you like, or come to me and say, Charles, you know, I need to have a word because you know, I've had this great opportunity. Um, and uh, will, you allow, will you allow me to go? Um, Unfortunately, that's not the way it was, and I had to do it the other way around, and it was difficult. But at the end of the day, and you know this better than most, um, it's what we consider to be the best thing for the football club. And we can go back in time and look at some very big names and individuals and people, um, and, and that's what it is. It's a judgment based on what is best for this football club today and more importantly going forward. So difficult, but... That's, that's where we are. When you look at what's happened in terms of when you put those stats and read those stats, they've been horrendous, unfortunately, for the team and for David and his, his managerial team. Supporters have backed you through thick and thin, there's no doubt about that. So why, why now, when you've had these horrendous stats, that you left it right up until the wire? Were you just hoping that things might drop for Dave and the changes he made in his manager routine, that you could get some results to steer you clear of where you've ended up? People might think that I'd already told you that, and I haven't. Um, yes, that's, that, that's right at the heart of it. Um, you know, you, you don't want to... Your first course of action is not to, to relieve... The, well, not this football club, anyway. is to relieve the manager of his post. Um, and we were doing a number of things during the course of those, as you say, quite horrendous runs, um, including... Uh, Dave making changes to his management team uh, to try and arrest the, uh, the the slide, and of course on top of that, um, there was a number of things that didn't work against Dave. I mean, some of the injuries um, have been really unlucky, and of course, losing the players last year when we did all in one go. If there had been no COVID, we'd have lost a couple the year before. Therefore, you know, the, the previous year might have not been as good as but last year wouldn't have been as dramatic as it turned out to be with five or six key players leaving. Um, the, I don't think there's any secret um, that the 
recruitment was really poor, um, which left which left us in a situation where we were we were pushing water uphill from the very start. So. He, some people might have said in November, December, that the writing was on the wall. Well, there's no doubt in November, December, you know, we, were, we were not in a great place. But is that the first place at which you look to uh, to say to the manager, well, it's, you know, it's, it's all your fault, um, which painfully it isn't uh, all his fault. Or how far do you go? Well, the decision we took was that um, we need to make sure that we finish the season with some kind of up and joy. Uh, and go into uh, the post-season and the closed season um, with some plans for some different plans for next year. And having a new leadership team to do that was the judgment we took with four games to go. It just happened to coincide with the relegation uh, game, but that was not you know, the one and only deciding factor at all. For you and your fellow members of the board of directors as well of Crow Alexander, how much responsibility do you think you hold for what has just unfortunately gone wrong? Well, of course we do, yeah. And I, you know, me in particular, you know, I'm the chairman of the board. And uh, I think I've said before that um, one of the things we've always done is let football manage, man, manage football and we've controlled budgets. But it, there is a bit more to it than that. So, you know, it's, it, this is a collective. Uh, we, we all uh, take some share of responsibility. And I sit at the top of the tree of it now. And, you know, it's, after all, it's all my responsibility in that sense. Um, and, you know, one that I, both in terms of the decision and the responsibility, I take very seriously. Obviously now, as we say, that door is shut and a new one has opened and you put Alex Morris and Lee Bell, two people who have been here a long time, in the interim charge of the, of the first team, along with Kenny as well. So what help can you give them, your board and the supporters? Because this is no disrespect to those two boys. This is a massive role that you've put them into. They're going into the Football League for their first management job. Short of experience, but they'll need help. It's all about support. Um, it's, it's certainly about support from, uh, from the board uh, and from me in particular. Um, and obviously it's about the support of, of our supporters. Now, our supporters have been, you know, just first class in what's been a pretty dire season. And, you know, I can only applaud, you know, their stickability. But they love this football club and more importantly, they understand this football club. So I, I don't envisage... Um, uh, any uh, dip in support from our supporters and in fact I could easily imagine that they would get behind us even more because we need them even more now. Uh, that is certainly true of the board as well. Um, we'd started a significant um, set of activities in terms of trying to support Dave and his team and it isn't just about David of course, it is about that team. So we'd started to make plans for new recruitment people um, new video people, new analysis people, and they continue because Alex and uh, Lee take on the management of the team, together with Kenny and Fred and, and numerous others. So it is a big job for them, but it's no bigger job for them than it was for David in the first place. They've got, I think both of them have been here since they were 12, and without giving away how old they are now, that's a hell of a long time between them. So they understand an awful lot about this football club. They understand an awful lot about uh, what is expected, both in terms of standards and, of course, in terms of the way we play and, um, and the results. But they can only do that if we support them. We start, I mean, we put quite a bit of effort into um, the financial side in terms of support last year, but it didn't work out. If you don't get your recruitment right, then, it, you know, that's difficult. You mentioned that they know the club inside out. How big is that and how key is that? that this isn't, it's so strange, isn't it? The Crowley's under, it's not all about managing and winning football matches. There's a lot of other things that you have to do to be the manager of Crowley's under. I'm looking at producing and giving your own players, youngsters, the opportunity. That still sticks with you, does it? Oh, without, without question. And um, we had um, a strategy session only two months ago, which we do on a, certainly a, a, an annual basis, to, to underline the fact that you know, we are an academy club. Now, 
that has implications that we haven't got time to go into today. Um, but it means the way in which you run your football club, um, uh, there are certain things you just have to do, both in terms of the Premier League, the rules, the regulations, and also in terms of the way in which you know, these things um, pan out. So playing our own uh, players that we've developed, usually from the age of nine, is a fundamental uh, part of the club and will remain a fundamental part of the club unless something dramatic changes on the academy model of the Premier League stop paying and, and all, but we don't envisage that. So uh, the knowledge of that, uh, of course, is inherent in everything that, uh, that Lee and Alex do. They came through it, they understand it, they, they don't think about it, it's there, uh, it's what they do. Now, of course, their focus has changed and it's the first team. At the end of the day, I mean, you won't find a bigger support of academy than me. But if, if there's no first team, <laughs> you don't have an academy. The academy is there, you know, in order to provide uh, quality footballs that we can watch on a Saturday afternoon and hopefully get, you know, go up the leagues and get promoted like we did a couple of years ago. So that will that is all in all that experience that Lee and, Lee and Alex have. So it is important, and of course. Um, when we move on to the next phase, it's, it's a huge consideration in terms of how we move forward. What do you want to see then, you and your, and your board members from Alex and Lee? This is only four games to go, but there's a lot of other things that has to go on in football every day of every week of every month. So yeah, it's, it's, I, think it's, it's, I think it's addressing the mood, really. You can't have a season where you're destined for relegation without the, the mood being affected, because the mood has been affected. You know, There's no question about that. You can see that uh, across the football club. So that is the, 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 the number one thing, because happy, happy players play better. Um, happy players play injured <laughs> sometimes. Unhappy players don't, and they're injured, don't play at all. So there's all those sort of marginal things um, that we all know there, but we don't, we don't consider them day to day. They will... Uh, they will affect all of those things. They will bring a new uh, approach, a new style to their, you know, their coaching and their man management. Uh, I don't know what they are uh, in any great detail, but they will be different. And let's be honest: the whole reason for for, for doing this is because we need to do something different. Um, we need to arrest this decline, and they will affect uh, the other staff at the club. They will be part of bringing in new people that we're investing in so that the team becomes effectively a new team with new vim, new vigour uh, and a new outlook. And of course, they will be looking at it. Well, I know they're looking at it as, you know, four games in order to uh, change the way things have been and try and arrest that decline. Play, you know, with... They, they could obviously play with a little less, um, with, with more freedom now because they are relegated, uh, and bring those kind of things to bear. And I, I think that's only positive. You mentioned the, the, the four games, but to, is there a time scale that you want to make that a permanent appointment? I know it's interim, and, and they're very, very clear favourites to, be, to become the permanent managers. But does that time scale mean anything, or, or, or doesn't it? To, well, the times, the, the, you know, time scale means something. The four games, not particularly. No, I mean, I've made, you know, I make no secret of the fact, and we've had a, a broad discussion about this uh, around the board table as well. And I think I was talking to some of your colleagues at the BBC uh, the other day. I mean, for me, I want Alex and uh, uh, Lee to, to to lead this football team, but to not look outside and not listen to people. You know, if Jose Mourinho comes along and you know. Uh, doesn't want too much money, they, what, we're not going to talk to him. We, we obviously will. Um, but for me, the the inherent knowledge that we've just discussed and that they know about is just so fundamental. Um, but we will go through a process. The the four games is, is the last two or three weeks of the season where they have an ability to uh, directly affect their players. I mean, I know... A lot of our supporters think players are mollycoddled, but you know they will go on their holidays, you know, at five o'clock on the last day because they've they've got to take all their holidays in a period of a, in a very short period of time, and they have to be back at pre-season training quite quickly this year. So um, by the time we get to the end of the uh, the games program, um, you know, Alex will have made an awful lot of uh, decisions about players that are out of contract, players that. Um, and we need to bring in, and we start that, that planning process. So we will be talking to them over the summer as we will be looking at the marketplace at large. 
all with a, as we will be looking at the marketplace at large for both players and you know what managers may or may not be be available. But for me, it's about you know that team um, uh, improving our overall standing and having a plan for pre-season and starting next season. Uh, Relegation hits all of it, a football club, there's no doubt about that. We'll talk a bit about your season tickets in, in a moment's time. But in terms of the playing side, all managers want more money, no matter whether they're top of the Premier League or coming out of the National League. How would you judge your budget that you can offer your, your managerial team because you've been relegated? Is it going to be competitive? Oh, I think it'll be competitive. Um, historically, our budgets are you know, pretty much down at the bottom. Um, but this year, they, they weren't. I mean, we put um, not huge amounts of money, but for, the, for this football club, you know, we invested quite significantly this year, and, and not to put too fine a point on it, we didn't get any real return on our investment. You know, if we've got players um, who just uh, literally weren't what we thought, then those wages are effectively, you know, um, not invested, aren't they? They're, they're wasted. So uh, it isn't always about money. It's it's but. Absolutely, money, you know, money, money helps. And what we'll be doing is, we will be holding our budgets. So you know, we're talking about first division or League One budgets in League Two, and we've already started that process with uh, with Alex. And Alex is uh, very happy that he can acquire the kind of skills in the team that he wants. But we won't be down, you know, if, if anybody had put a microphone in front of me during the last few seasons and said, where do you think you stand in the, the salary budgets, we'd have probably been number 24 in any league we were ever in. Um, I'm very confident that won't be the case next year. But equally, I don't want to put the pressure on to Alex to say, well, you know, Alex, you've got, the, you know, relatively speaking, not a, not a bad budget, therefore you must be able to succeed. It isn't, it, you know, it's not that black and white. And of course, our supporters know it's not that black and white. But it will be a strain to maintain things when, you know, uh, distributions uh, from central funds and TV and all that sort of stuff amount to probably a million pounds before we even start. And, um, so we're a million pounds down before we start. But that's what comes with relegation. You know, it's not a surprise. We know what it is. We know what the challenges are. Um, and, you know, as a chairman, a board, a management team and all the staff, we're up for it. Um, we, we are. Two things before we come to the end of... I'm sure your supporters will be well pleased with what you've, what you've heard from you. You mentioned recruitment and improving the team. Where are you up to? You know, in terms of bringing those people in? Um, when we look at staff, uh, we're well along the path. Um, we've had just this week, um, through a whole, it's funny how things work, isn't it? But a whole series of events, but I, I won't go into the detail of because it, it is the minutiae. But, you know, we've, we've had um, two physiotherapists, we've been short on physiotherapists, very difficult to deal with to get physiotherapists in the current marketplace. Uh, we've had two physiotherapists join us. We've had um, two members of staff who thought they might want to leave, um, who will be staying. We've got um, two uh, guys in the areas of recruitment, um, data analysis and match analysis, who are virtually on board. I would have to check with Cole Hancock as to exactly where we are. But as far as I'm aware, they're, they're virtually here. And they were certainly up and running, ready for the um, um, for the project ahead of finding new players to uh, to bolster the team for next year, um, and Alex is very much into the quality rather than the quantity. Um, so that is one investment, and two seems to be going quite well. Particularly the areas I'm absolutely on top of um, is going really well. The key area, of course, is recruitment of players. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course, it is. you know, and that's. You know, and you know, our supporters understand probably better than I do that you know that's you know, that's a challenge and a challenge that uh, two new people are looking at with really fresh eyes. So one wrapping up then this chat, the fans have followed you. They've been disappointed. They've had the say. They've had the frustrations vented. They've had a couple of banners here and there. But season tickets are going to be out and about for everybody. What's your message then? to your supporters to keep them coming back to the Mournflake Stadium next season when you kick off in League Two? My message is that um, you understand this football club, you know how much it means to you, you know how much it means to your family, you know how much it means to the town, 
Um, and, you know, please come and support us. I'm very confident that they will. Um, I'm very confident that uh, after the disappointment, and God, we're all disappointed, uh, after the disappointment, it's about, it's, it's about going again. It's, it's about the um, looking forward to next... I mean, we're looking forward to next season already. You know. Now, as it happens, it's a short, close season, and we'll be writing to um, fans about season tickets uh, very soon. And I would just ask them to continue to support in the, the loyal and fantastic way that they've done for years, but particularly over the last year, when it's been a pretty joyless year, um, get behind us again and go. And you know what? I, I think they will, because they know this is, this is a bad time for us. I mean, football fans are interested. I mean, we're all fans. Uh, and this is the time when you really need to support in whatever way you can. And I think they will. And I'm very confident, and I hope, certainly hope they do.